Hello and welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to be responding to the Forbes article, The Ethics of Transhumanism and the Cult of Futurist Biotech. It was written by Julian Vigo and contrary to what the article here is stating, it was not written seven to nine minutes ago. Let's begin. Transhumanism also abbreviated as H+, is a philosophical movement which advocates for technology not only enhancing human life, but to take over human life by merging human and machine. The idea is that one future day, humans will be vastly more intelligent, healthy, and physically powerful. In fact, much of this movement is based upon the notion that death is not an option, with a focus to improve the somatic body and make humans immortal. So keep this definition in mind, because in pretty much the very next paragraph, he sort of contradicts it. Well, maybe not explicitly contradicts it, but it doesn't really mesh well. He says, certainly, there are those in the movement who espouse the most extreme virtues of transhumanism, such as replacing perfectly healthy body parts with artificial limbs. And right there, your own definition says that like, the most basic aspect of transhumanism is taking over hum <coughs> human life by merging human and machine. And replacing limbs is one of those. And is it really like the most extreme version of transhumanism? Because a person with like a robot arm and maybe robot eyes are is would be pretty much the most basic quintessential uh, transhumanist archetype you could imagine. Like, that'd be a pretty quick thing somebody would think of when they hear the word transhumanist. <clears throat> but medical ethicists raise this and other issues as a reason why transhumanism is so dangerous to humans, when what is considered acceptable life enhancement has virtually no checks and balances over who gets a say when we go too far. For instance, Kevin Warwick of Coventry University, a cybernetics expert, asked The Guardian, What is wrong with replacing imperfect bits of your body with artificial parts that will allow you to perform better, or which might allow you to live longer? While another doctor stated that he would have no part in such surgeries, there is, after all, a difference between placing a pacemaker or performing laser eye surgery on the body to prolong human life and lend a greater degree of success of quality to human life and that of treating the human body as a tabula rasa upon which to rewrite what it is, effectively the natural course of human life. Now, unfortunately, he doesn't go into any detail here about what he thinks is too far. And when he does talk about what he thinks is a, a bad example of transhumanism or example of transhumanism being detrimental later in the article, it has nothing to do with replacing perfectly healthy body parts with mechanical equivalents. But I would argue that the reason people think it's okay to replace uh, perfectly healthy parts of the body with machines is, as Kevin Warwick, Warwick said, they're imperfect. If you could replace the eye with something that maybe doesn't even do anything extreme like see in the dark or infrared vision, but just sees complete clarity, the eye, the mechanical one, would likely be designed without the blind spot that normal human eyes do. 
and the same if it's a heart if you, if you have a mechanical heart that does nothing but pump blood and doesn't have any major advanta advantage beyond that the fact it won't degrade because you eat too many cheeseburgers or you're depressed or any of the other number of things that cause cardiovascular issues down the road would make it inherently superior to what human organs are capable of that's why they're so eager to uh, replace healthy body parts with artificial limbs because they're only healthy for so long and sometimes even being healthy is not optimal A largely intellectual movement whose aim is to transform humanity through the development of a panoply of technologies which ostensibly enhance human intellect, psychology, and the very legal status of what a human be of what being human means. Transhumanism is a social project whose inspiration can be dated back to 19th century continental European philosophy and later through the writings of J.B.S. Haldane, a British scientist and Marxist who in 1923 delivered a speech at the Here oh, sorry, Heretic Society, an intellectual club at Cambridge University entitled uh, Daedalus or Science and the Future which foretold the future of the end of coal power generation in Britain while proposing a network of windmills which would quote be used for the electrolytic decomposition of water into oxygen and hydrogen and quote they would generate hydrogen according to many transhumanists this is one of the founding projects of the movement to read this, one might think this was a precursor to the contemporary ecological movement. Now I've uh, read this speech, and in fact I even have a link for it up here that I'm going to show later. And when I did read through the speech and then finished this article, I have the suspicion, the absolute suspicion that this person who wrote this article didn't read through the speech so I will be showing why at the end of this and I'll also be showing a quote from from the article that I think applies to this but I find it to be a very weird example to use JBS Haldane who yes he's a very old futurist but not necessarily a transhumanist. I mean, I think the more obvious one would have been uh, Julian Huxley, or if you really wanted to go back far enough, uh, Fyodorov, I think his name is, the Russian who invented cosmism, which is a philosophy that's sort of a precursor to transhumanism. And this example he gives is very weird too, especially you know when I tell you about what's in the uh, lecture later on but using windmills to separate oxygen and hydrogen sounds like fission power to be honest which is a technology that exists fusion power like actually making that viable doesn't exist yet but we can separate elements and yes, it actually does sound like a contemporary ecological movement precursor. It doesn't really sound like transhumanism, which you yourself define as merging man and machine. The philosophical tenets, academic theories, and institutional practices of transhumanism are well known. Not really, I would say like it's a bit more popular than it was a decade ago especially due to like uh, video games using it like Deus Ex and whatever but it's not exactly something that's on the forefront of human discourse at the moment Max Moore a British philosopher and leader of the extropian movement 
claims that transhumanism is a continuation and acceleration of evolution of intelligent life beyond its currently human form and human limitations by means of science and technology, guided by life-promoting principles and values. This very definition, however, is a paradox since the ethos of this movement is to promote life through that which is not life, even by removing pieces of life to create something billed as meta-life. Indeed, it is clear that transhumanism banks on its own contradiction, that life is deficient as is, yet can be bettered by prolonging life even to the detriment of life. You know, it's not like all these people are agreeing that the definition of transhumanism is basically merging man and machine and improving upon the human body with uh, science and <clears throat> technology. So I, I really do want to know why you decided to use this example for what's a precursor, for what's a, you think is early transhumanism. or like a founding project and I don't see why you would you know quibble about this when the definition Max Moore presents isn't all that different than the one you presented earlier and you can call it a contradiction all you want but if you have a machine that's breaking down and doesn't work as optimally as it could then taking out a part and replacing it with a better part is just smart thinking. It's not exactly to the detriment of life if it allows a person to live longer. Stefan Lorenz uh, Sortner, I pretty much butchered that I'm sure, is a German philosopher and bioethicist who has written widely on the ethical implications of transhumanism to include writing on cryonics and longevity of human life, all of which go against most ecolo ecological principles given the amount of resources needed to keep bodies in suspended animation post-death. At the heart of Sortner's writings, like those of Kyle Monkittrick invoke an almost naive rejection of death, noting that death is neither natural nor part of human evolution. In fact, much of the writings on transhumanism take a radical approach to technology. Anyone who dare question that cutting off healthy limbs to make way for super Olympian sports person would be called a ludite, anti-technology. But that is a false dichotomy since most critics of transhumanism are not against all technology, but question the ethics of any technology that interferes with the human rights of humans. I find it a bit odd that uh, this person keeps you know, bringing up these people here, even though like this uh, whole bit almost this whole last bit could have just been tacked on to the end of this paragraph and would have worked just as well. It just seems like you're bringing up names for the sake of it. I would disagree that death is not natural. It's very much natural and a prime example of why natural does not automatically equal good. And it certainly is a part of evolution, it's one of the major drivers of evolution. And I would also agree that it is poor form to label any critic of transhumanism based simply on the fact they're critics of transhumanism as Luddites. Bioconservatives, perhaps, would be a much better term. Although I think the term uh, neo-Luddites has been invented or you know, coined that relates specifically to rejecting technologies today, but not necessarily all technologies throughout time. But as a rule of thumb, unless you're like some raving anarcho primitivist, you might want to save that term for someone else.
Take for instance a recent push by many on the ostensible left who favor surrogacy as a step on the transhumanist ladder, with many publications on the subject, none so far which address the human rights of women who are not only part of this equation, but whose bodies are being used in this Fox Futurist version of life without the mention of female bodies. And this is what he's going to be complaining about for the rest of the article. So you remember when I point out that the definition of transhumanism that he adheres to and Max Moore who he quotes or references in this article adheres to is merging man and machine? Well now the definition extends to surrogacy. He wants to lump that in with transhumanism and it's apparently a major part of the ostensible left who believe it's a step on the transhumanist ladder. I can tell you right now that as far as the left in US politics at least are concerned, transhumanism is not really on their radar. And I find the whole thing about like, you know, uh, whose bodies are used, being used in this Fox Futurist version of life and uh, this whole issue of human rights of women with his surrogacy stuff. Surrogacy exists. The medical technology to carry it out exists. There's been multiple instances of surrogacy happening in the last decade and even before that. And you don't really have to worry about the human rights of women in this case because they already have rights in this, w like with this uh, process that exists today. There, it's not the case where there's people trying to plan out like a government draft for women to be surrogates. It's an opt-in thing and they have protections and rights when they decide to be a surrogate. And yeah, it probably won't have any mention of female body since that's pretty much a given. That's pretty much the only body that can carry a baby. It would seem a bit of a no-brainer. It seems like something that goes without mention, does it not? Verso's publication of a troubling piece by Sophie Lewis earlier this year, aptly titled Gestators of all genders unite, oh good grief, speaks to the lack of ethics in a field that seems to be grasping at straws in removing the very mention of the bodies which reproduce and give birth to human life, females. In eliminating the specificity of the female body, Lewis attempts to stitch together a utopian future where genders are having children even though the reality of reproduction across the mammalia class demonstrates that sex, not gender, determines where life is gestated and birthed. Alright, so... If genders and sexes are separate, like there's two sexes and then there's, I don't know how much, seven trillion genders at this point, then saying that, like, all of these genders could have kids would not necessarily violate the claim that only females can have kids. Now I think the whole idea of you know, all these genders having kids is about as stupid as you do. We probably agree on that, but I'm going to be willing to give Sophie Lewis the benefit of the doubt on this, that she's at least aware that females are the ones who just eight and birth children. What Lewis attempts in fictionalizing a world of dreamy hopefulness is actually resembles more an episode of The Handmaid's Tale, where the writer has lost sense of any irony. Isn't The Handmaid's Tale based on the premise where uh, women, or I guess we should specify based on sex, females are infertile or became infertile and so the government turned into theocracy and started you know stripping away their rights f 
for the few that are able to have kids. Because if there's like this utopian idea that all nine quadrillion genders are able to have kids, that doesn't exactly resemble a dystopia where very, very few people are able to have kids. It is uniquely about sex and the class of gestators are females under erasure by this dystopian movement anxious to pursue a vision of a world without women. Alright, I see a title called Gestators of All Genders Unite. And that just fucking screams like a shrill fucking banshee social justice warrior. And if there's one bloody world that social justice warriors aren't going to imagine unless it's in their deepest fears, it's a world without women. I don't think you have to worry about Sophie Lewis imagining that and you know feeling a sense of euphoria over it. I, I think you're safe. While many transhumanist ideals remain purely theoretical in scope, what is clear is that females are the class of humans who are being theorized out of social and political discourse. Boy, this really didn't age well with the whole Supreme Court thing, did it? In fact, it wouldn't even have aged well if that whole thing didn't happen. Like, the whole women's rights things is still a pretty major topic of discussion, even in Western countries. And I don't even think there's a particular huge amount of transhumanists who are interested in removing women from the world either. Indeed, much of the social philosophy surrounding transhumanist projects sets out to eliminate gender in the human species through the application of advanced biotechnology and assisted reproductive technologies, ultimately inspired by uh, Shell Smith's Firestone, the dialect of sex. Oh god, that was so shit. And much of Donna Haraway's writings on cyborgs which is also shit and both of these are like you know turbo social justice warrior ramblings but with a sci-fi twist to them again these aren't the people who want to write out women from the world they're the people who think that women have the same amount of oppression today as they did a hundred years ago they're the people who look at jiggle physics and video games and want to take to the streets because it's turbo misogyny and teaching people women aren't people. They're not going to be doing what you, th you think they're doing. Whether or not they think surrogacy or 20 quintillion genders or whatever should be having babies. From the parthogenesis to the creation of artificial wombs, this movement seeks to remove the specificity of not gender, but sex, through the elision of medical terminology and producer, oh, produ shit, procures which pretend to advance a technological human cyborg built on the ideals of a post-sex model. Well, my word, is that not a delicious word salad. We finally got to artificial wombs though, the thing that transhumanists are actually are invested in and not just surrogacy. And how can you say they seek to remove not gender but sex from the equation even though the examples you gave earlier are literally concerning genders. And I question, do you mean like pretend or do you actually mean portend here? The problem, however, is that women are quite aware that sex-based inequality has zilch to do with anything other than their somatic sex and nothing transhumanist theories can propose will wash away the reality of the sexed human body and what upon which social stereotypes are piled. Well, that is true. Barring a overhaul of human psychology, we are going to continue being a sexual species. 
It's why when envisioning sex robots, we don't imagine them looking like R2-D2. But you would really be hard-pressed to find examples of transhumanists wanting to remove women specifically from society. You'd be hard-pressed to find a reason why surrogacy is detrimental to their rights. They have more rights after surrogacy became a thing than before it. They are able to own property, they can become politicians, they have the uh, ability, they can work, they have the ability to try to influence the world around them beyond just pumping out children. And that hasn't changed because surrogacy became a thing. And it's not going to be artificial wombs that will change that either. Like something that actually frees them from this biological role they have, which you agree is uh, the reason inequality is a thing. So there's this thing that frees them from it, so they're no longer restricted to it, they're no longer the only means to gestate and birth children, and that's supposed to strip away their rights? That's supposed to make it so they have less rights. That doesn't necessarily add up. I think you're getting over worried about silly things for no good reason. And then trying to pin it on transhumanism, this uh, futurist biotech cult. So it's a stupid article, but now to talk about the elephant in the room. So this whole last bit here was about uh, surrogates and artificial wombs basically augmenting the developing and birthing process, right? Well, that's actually something that JPS, uh, JBS Haldane talked about. He discussed it in the biology session of his uh, lecture, and he even envisioned a future where it became a huge part of politics. The problem of politics is to find institutions suitable for it. In the future, perhaps it may be possible by selective breeding to change character as quickly as institutions. I can foresee the election play cards are 300 years hence. If such quaint political methods survive, which is perhaps improbable, vote for Smith and more musicians, vote for O'Leary and more girls, or perhaps finally, vote for MacPherson and a prehensible tale for your great-grandchildren. Like, he even discusses the first instance of, like, implanting embryos in, from one woman into another and whether or not it would work. So why didn't you mention any of this in your article when you went out of your way to mention him as an example of early transhumanists? None in the 19th century continental European philosophy camp, but specifically J.B.S. J. B. S. Haldane. You think that would be a much better example than fission windmills, you think that would be a pretty good precursor to then jump straight to this whole issue with surrogacy. I mean, on top of being factually incorrect in a lot of places and inconsistent, it's just poorly written and poorly thought out. But there is one thing that uh, this person has Uh, said that I think applies pretty well to your article and it's this the chemical or physical inventor is always a Prometheus there's no great invention from fire to flying which has not been hailed as an insult to some god but if every physical and chemical invention is a blasphemy every biological invention is a perversion there's hardly one which, 
on first being brought to the notice of an observer from any nation which has not previously heard of their existence would not appear to him as an in as indecent or unnatural and boy is that something you seem to have with surrogacy and the idea of artificial wombs in general so that concludes this video I hope you enjoyed it and gave you something to think about and otherwise entertained you take